a lot. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I, where I am, I'm a library person, and uh, so at one time I got this book for the library, which is right here. And uh, I get these books so I can set up challenge problems for the undergraduates. And, the, the, and, and so I put up a challenge problem about chains with only four links in it. And uh, I got a lot of good feedback from students about it. And, uh, and then one, of the one was not a student. He was a lecturer in the class. Uh, and, he, um, and he started working with uh, longer chains. And so then I gave him this book so he could read it. And he came up with an algorithm. And then we, I helped him work on this. But he couldn't come to give the talk. So I'm replacing him. Because he's off in Ireland having a good time. <laughs> and so <laughs> I'm going to give the talk. So it's uh, and something that uh, Joseph wrote about, and that was in here where we got it. And so here we go. So where is it on this one? Oh, that one. Okay. So there's this n-chain partition theorem, which I didn't want to like write completely out, but these are the people who were involved in it. Joseph and his uh, student from a long time ago. And then I found out that after we had done stuff that, that uh, Borso and Strenu had also written some very good stuff about it. And they referenced back in the past, so about robotic arms and uh, manipulators. And so th there's this general feeling that if you have a chain of links where each of the angles has to be fixed, they can be different angles at each one, but each time they're fixed and you're spreading it out and you want to maximize the distance between the endpoints, that in the end, um, it's going to come into planar sections. So it'll be the first few links will be one set on one plane, then the next few links will be on another plane, and the next few links will be on another plane. And where they're connected, which are called maybe the joint points, so that, that, that would be a joint point, and this one, and this one, and this one, that they're on a single line. So that's the main result, is that when you have a maximum uh, distance between the end point and the final point, that those joint, those where they join the planar sections, um, it forms a straight line. And then, so, that, so the basic strategy then is that the first planar section with this one, we're going to let that create a plane. So we want to work on that plane. So that'll be the, the fixed plane. And then we're going to start moving. Um, the chain around and try and load, find out where this thing goes and we want to maximize it. So that's sort of the general strategy. And so I came up with a method, but David came up with, a, with another method and I thought his method was good, so, so that's what I'm trying to present here. So you first lie it down so it's flat, so the whole chain is lying on that original flat surface. And then you're going to start rotating things around it, or folding the links. And you're going to do it from the end of the chain, and you're going to work towards the first vertex coming in. So you're going to do it in order. And so eventually you'll come up with, uh, with the, uh, the arrangement that make it maximize. And um, now in the end, because the first point and the last point and all of the joint points lie on the plane, in the end, the final vertex will lie on the original plane. So the strategy is that we're going to, instead of going in three dimensions and worrying to see where this thing's going to go, we're always going to rotate in the end so it comes back down to the plane. And so we turn it into a two-dimensional problem instead of a three-dimensional problem. And then it gets quite complicated. So at some point, we want to do some sort of thing where you, we sort of cut stuff away, get rid of stuff. And that's this trimming procedure, which I'll talk about. And in the end, you can, once you trim everything, you can find the, the end maximum point. So that's OK, so here's just with a short train uh, chain. And um, so if I rotate that last link around this one, you're only going to get two points on the plane. But as you're rotating it around, you're going to get a circle which is orthogonal to the plane. And then you take that circle, which is orthogonal to the plane, and then you're going to rotate it around this link. And when you do that, it'll hit the plane and create these two arcs. So, that, so that's 
the first two steps to rotate that one over there, get two points, then rotate it around this one and get these arcs on the plane. And so basically when we're rotating these circles, it's like putting a little circle on a globe and rotating it around, and you're going to get two uh, lines of latitude, and you're going to get all of the region between the two lines of latitude. And then you're going to cut the plane, then you're going to cut it in half, and then you're going to end up with just these two arcs. Okay, then the next step is to then rotate it around this one. So you're rotating this, this, uh, these two arcs and their corresponding circles, and you're going to rotate them around and see where it lands over here. So that in the two-dimensional version, we've just got all of those red arcs to look at. And so, so, so these are the locations where the final vertex is going. So the possible places the final vertex goes onto the plane are places within those red arcs. And so here's sort of the two basic setups here. So the VN is the last vertex. And uh, there's two procedures here. So the first rotation sends it over to here. And then in the second rotation, you're going to go across here, then this one. Uh, goes over there, and this one can go over there. And then, this, so they look very similar, but there's two basic differences here. So the difference here in the first one is that when I start with the first vertex, the end vertex, and flip it over here, both of them are on this side of this line. Whereas on this one, it's different. When I flip it over, this is on that side, and this is on the other side. So there's two very different setups here. And so it's always going to be an issue whether after you do that one flip, you're on the same side of the next rotation, or you flipped it over on your, and you're on the other side. And then the notation here with the, with the n minus 2 and the n minus 1, if I flip it over uh, uh, this one here, which is the ln minus 1, that's the n minus 1 in here. If I flip it over this one, this is, this is the ln minus 2, so I put the ln minus 2. And so we can do this many more times, and then you'll get a whole sequence of numbers here where you keep the flipping over. And then, but the other, then, then forget about the, the notation and just think about these two things. I've got two cases where I've got two symmetrical points across this line, and then we want to sort of see what happens when I rotate around this way. And this case is where I have uh, two symmetrical points, but they're on opposite sides. And so this is sort of the general case here. So with the, the original two arcs were this one, the two blue ones in this case, and then we pick sort of arbitrary points. So you got P and a P prime. Here they're on uh, the same side, and Q and Q prime are on opposite sides. And then for the, the P and the P prime, you just, the red arc just goes from P to P prime. And then for the Q and the Q prime, it, you don't take the arc from Q to Q prime. You have to then flip the Q prime again over here and then draw the red arc that goes from here to this one. So there's, when they're on opposite sides, you have to do two steps. When they're on the same side, it's just one step. And you're just drawing these red arcs. So really the whole thing is then, once you get this procedure, we can forget about three dimensions. So you just follow this procedure in two dimensions. We don't have to worry about going in three dimensions, and you just keep this up. And so there's only two things to worry about. And then, um, so if I keep this up, so if I do this for every pair of points on this one and this one, then it's going to cover in this entire region, and then it's going to cover in this thing here. So, th so inside that region is going to be all of the possible places where that VN vertex is going to end up in, in this case, after the two steps. Now, because we want to sort of maximize, we're going to forget about the interior points and just look at the boundary points. So we're only going to really con concerned about the boundary here. And so, <coughs> so it would sort of look like this, where I sort of take the inner red thing and this thing here and you flip it over here. And not only we can, are we interested in the boundary, you can take the convex hull, in which case when you take the convex hull, you can cut off this part and this part and all of this, and it looks like a hockey rink. And, uh, 
and so now we're so now we've sort of cut stuff away and so that's the trimming process so it looked kind of complicated but now it's sort of less complicated because now after the two steps we've just got the blue the red the blue and it's symmetric version over here okay so then we want to go to one more step so if I in this one here we, I didn't bother trimming it so technically it would be trimmed but I've left out the pre-trimming thing okay and so I want to indicate the two uh, cases case one is again where this region is on the opposite side of this thing here so in this case it's sort of the easy case here so um, when I do the procedure here so we're when we're doing the rotation we get these circles um, and get these green areas and then you just flip it over and it looks like this and then bring back in the original boundaries because in the end we're just going to work with the boundaries we're not going to work with the interior and then just throw away all of the interior stuff and then trim it so now it looks like this so after those so now after the third step it would look like this in the case one where the two regions were separated by the rotation line and then the M and the, the M and the M prime in here are important because they're the points that are maximal points from here to that arc and so they're going to be important to compute because that's going to give an algorithm to, to go from one step to the next step without actually drawing the picture so at some point I'll talk about finding the M and the M prime and then uh, how it's going to be used so this is uh, this is the other case case two where uh, so this was the original thing here but now this is I'm trying to reflect across this one but this this cuts into this one it cuts into that chunk so that causes the problem so that the regions aren't in the other case we had one region over here and the other region was on this side of the line the reflection line okay so when you reflect here um, then we miss out this part here which is that gets missed because of the crossover all of this part gets missed in here and you get this thing here so really what the region looks like where that last vertex can go the VN would be take that thing and rotate it around this axis and you get some sort of very complicated three-dimensional region which we don't want to deal with we just want to deal with the, its projection down or it's where it crosses this plane which looks like this and then here's where it would look like if I didn't have the green, I would just flip them over this way here and then sort of take boundaries and trim so throw away the green stuff and so this is where that last vertex is going to when it lands on the plane and then the trimming makes it look like this so after the trimming it comes fairly easy to work with okay and then so here's the where you got to compute the max point so so if I'm going from in this case it's just a short chain this is a, the initial V0 and we're going to this where it landed with and then there's another reflection of it on the other side which we don't have to worry about and so basically um, it's you you just travel along here so you could travel along say the top thing and start measuring the distances from V0 going along this arc and because the center of the blue circle is here and the center of the red circle is here then these arcs don't when you, they don't go through the circle so that red line doesn't go through the circle and the blue one doesn't do the circle so when we're traveling along these two three arcs it's going to increase so it increases along the blue and then it'll decrease along the red and it'll decrease along this one so the maximum point would be right there so generally in the end it's going to be when we get to the to the final trim section you're going to go along the arcs there might be 27 arcs in the end it's going to be increasing up to a point and then decreasing or it's going to increase all of the way or it's going to decrease all of the way there's not going to be like two options so there'll be a unique maximum point and so um, here's another trimming example where we've gotten to the case where uh, we're down to here there, this 
light red, the light blue, and the light red, and we want to go to the next step where we're going to re uh, rotate over this guy here, and the question is how are we going to see what the next uh, um, trend version looks like? And so in this case, it's you find the max point from here, which is the V2, and it turns out to be this one here. And, uh, and then you do a double reflection. So you're going to reflect over here, and then you're going to reflect over here, which amounts to a rotation. So it's a double reflection. So you double the angle here, you, this one here, and you're going to rotate and get that green arc. And as you rotate the green arc, you're actually going to rotate the light blue and the light red, and they go up to the dark blue and the dark red, and, and you leave this part in. So the next trim part would look like this part and then that part, and then you reflect it over here, and then you do a final trimming again. So, so, so there's a process we have. Once you find the max point, you can decide how you're going to use the max point on that level to create the next trim. And um, so here I thought I'd do an, uh, just a quick little four thing, because I think in the end, everything's about just four lengths, and you just sort of generalize it. Two minutes? OK, so here's, um, so if I start with the thing that looks like this, and I want the first, after the first step, I want the two blue things. So. Um, you get those two arcs here, and then you have to find the maximum point from B naught to the blue, the two blue arcs. And it's like obviously up here. So that's obviously the maximum point from there to there. And how did I get to there? So that's, so that's, that's the four, three, two. So you first reflect the, the, this thing over this one, and then you reflect it over this one, and you get up to there. So that's your max point. So then how do you arrange the, train, the chain to give you that max point? So you just take the operation, uh, reflect, and then reflect, and you do that, and you end up with this picture. And so now you've got um, the arrangement of the chain, and that's going to be the maximum distance. And so um, and just we're going to sort of do that in general for the longer chains. And that's, uh, that's basically it, I think. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? So the, the number of points on the trimmed arcs, mm -hmm. it's never more than linear? It's, ne it's every time you, yeah, so you've got a number of arcs and you're only going to add one or two more arcs and, and possibly take the other, the old arcs and rotate them a bit. But you're only going to add in either one or two new so arcs. Two and yeah. Yeah. But then you have to go through, introduce the process of finding the max point and then that's another, yeah. Thank you. Ah, yeah.